going on guys? My name is Perky and today what I'm doing is I'm actually bringing you the long-awaited stealth mission walkthroughs in Payday 2. Of course before I get too far into this I want to give a little thank you out to the guys over in the FF clan, Fate, uh, Sways, Micro, Jinx. They both helped me out and this whole walkthrough series probably wouldn't have been possible without them. We knocked all of them out in one day and that's what I'm getting to you. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your help. Alright, let's jump straight into it. So you're gonna see as I start out here, I'm going straight to the right because what you're gonna want to do is climb up to the roof. Now let's start with what you're gonna need. Now to fully stealth this mission, you're gonna want Smooth Talker, which is a skill in the Mastermind Tree. That's gonna let you interact with four pagers and keep the cops off your back. And then you're gonna want to make sure you have at least one point in the Dominator skill in the Mastermind Tree because that's gonna let you put a cop down on his knees he's not gonna call the cops he's just gonna sit there with his hands on his head very nice to have because in the mission that we did there were five cops and you know we were probably screwed if we didn't have both of those perks now the other perk I would suggest is actually cleaner aced out that's in the ghost tree and what's gonna let you do is it's gonna let you bag up bodies every time you kill somebody you can throw them in a bag and move that around as you see fit very nice to have because if you kill a guard in a doorway you're pretty much guaranteed to be caught. There's gonna be nothing you can do about that. You're gonna have to get out of there, and it's gonna be a rough mission. To expedite this process even further, you wanna have somebody in the ghost tree with fast hands maxed out. That's gonna let them catch the paintings through the window, and then they can throw that right to the truck, and it'll minimize the chance of being detected. Now, you do wanna make sure that you're careful because guards can see you almost immediately through the windows up top, so watch out for that. Now, as a backup plan for day one, if things get a little crazy, you're gonna wanna bring a saw, and you're gonna wanna bring an ECM jam that can open up keycard doors. That's gonna take a lot of points into the ghost tree. If you don't have it, you know, that can make it a little bit longer, a little bit more difficult, but you can find a key card to open it up, so it shouldn't be too bad. All right, now the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna look for the room with the high-flying tarp-looking thing right in the center of the room. Now you can see how I opened up a window here. I can fall straight through that into the ground, but I'd probably actually go down from that height. From that drop, it's gonna hurt. So there's a room with something that's pretty high up. You wanna look for it, jump down on it, when the guards are clear. Now keep an eye out, you want to be scouting this whole time, you want to be looking for where the guards are, what you have to watch out for, and kind of how fast they're moving. Look for that, and then know when you can jump down and be alright. Alright, so once you drop down, keeping one person up on the roof to catch the paintings, you're gonna want to look for the paintings with the red sticker next to them. This sticker means that they can be taken, grab those paintings, roll them up, toss it up to the guy in the ceiling, and then you should be able to go. If you don't have anybody with the fast hands perk, you can still make this work easily. Just have him come down with you guys, everybody grab a painting, maybe two, and uh, kill the guards as you go, dominate one of them if you can, and then you should be able to walk out just fine scot-free. Alright, so that's gonna wrap up day one. Now day two is arguably the easiest one. All you're gonna do is you're gonna start off, you're gonna listen to the instructions of the guy on the phone, you're gonna walk in, drop the paintings off the table, he's gonna throw money down after you throw the paintings up to him, blah blah, just a little bit of a waiting game. Sometimes there's an ambush, but then all you have to do is run and gun through it. Other than that, sometimes you can still stealth this. I mean, this one's one of those things where you don't really have an option. Either you have an ambush, or you don't. So you just walk to the, the escape route with your bags of money, Call it good, walk out of there. It's actually a really fast day. There's really no reason you should have any trouble with this, um, you know, except maybe the cops come. All right, now day three is by far the hardest you're gonna get in this here mission. Day one and two, they're both easily done, even if you mess up the stealth. This one here, though, uh, I swear to God, I've never finished this mission without stealth. It's, it's very much the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. So, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this did take several tries, and it took a full team of guys cooperating. This is a very difficult mission, especially after they buffed the difficulty. So what we had to do, was we had to deal with five guards here. Now we dominated one, and we answered the pagers of four others to make sure the cops didn't come. If you answer the pagers for all five guards, then the cops are still gonna come, because they're gonna realize that they've had like five different pager calls and they're gonna be like, hey, something might be up. But what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna leave one person by the camera feed. Now the paintings that you stole on day one are gonna have cameras installed in them. So the more paintings that you stole, the more cameras you're gonna have for the guy to look through. It's gonna be very important that you get as many as possible. You have to have a minimum of four. So definitely try to get more if you can. If not, that's fine. You can still do it fairly easily. Um, it can get a little difficult. You want to try to stick together because in some cases multiple guards will turn the corner at the same time or they'll come from uh, different locations and you'll get sandwich answering a pager or something like that and that's gonna end your mission really quick because the second they call the police you are in big trouble. These guys come rushing through in huge waves, and you've just got very little to no chance. Alright, so sneak around looking for five electronic items. Once you find all five, you're gonna want to go to the roof. Now, here on the roof, you're gonna assemble all of the stolen electronic items. 
You're gonna try to access his desktop computer, and using that desktop computer, you're gonna try to find his hidden vault. Now, once you find the hidden vault, it's pretty easy, because at this point, you should have all the guards pretty much subdued or controlled, and you should actually be able to stop sneaking. You should be able to just run around as you please. Now, you wanna place eight bags of coke right outside the vault room. Now, the vault room, in our case, was actually downstairs at the very bottom floor. It could be different for you guys. You're gonna have to move some bookshelves and stuff, click around, look for something that you can interact with. And once you find it via the desktop computer, it should be marked, so it's actually not gonna be that difficult to find. Now, after you place those bags of coke down there, you have the option to just run out with no, no money, from the vault in your hands you know you can just sprint out if you want and it'll end the mission and it'll be fine you'll get the experience you'll get a decent amount of money whatever floats your boat but you have another option which is to use the desktop computer to open the vault door and then once you do that you can actually use that desktop computer again to disable the lasers now you want to have one person in charge of getting the money out of the vault one person because multiple people can cause complications. Working as a team, you have one person disable the lasers. Immediately after those lasers are disabled, you can throw four bags out of the vault if you have fast hands per. So disable the lasers, throw four bags out, stay in the vault and wait for the laser to turn back on. Now once they turn back on, the person at the desktop computer can turn them back off. The person in the vault then has the ability to throw four more bags out there. And you do this until the vault is empty. I think it might be eight bags, at least in our case. And remember, you can run around now. It's not a big deal. You don't have to worry about stealthing. So now you carry the gold up to the zip line on top of the roof, throw it in that basket, and then head out. That's all there is to it, guys. It's very, very difficult to get right, but once you get it, it's actually something that you'll kind of get used to. Something that you're not going to have too much difficulty with unless you get spotted and if you do get spotted if it's not a pro job i would honestly suggest that you restart the mission just fall down die and call it good because you're really gonna have the hardest time possible you're gonna have to hack into the computer room you're gonna have to upload something which is gonna take a solid three minutes or four minutes or so and then you're gonna have to escape all while fighting off, you know, some very powerful guards, very powerful SWAT teams and shields and stuff, and bulldozers, and it's just gonna be god-awful. You're, you're not gonna want to stick it out. And that's about it, guys. That's how you finish all three days. Let me hit you with the summary here. Now, the first day, you're just stealing the paintings. You need at least four, but the more you get, the easier day three is gonna be. Every time you see a guard, every time you see uh, an item that you need to steal... It's going to mark those, and then your team's going to be able to see it. Very, very nice to have. So grab as many paintings as possible. Otherwise, you can just do the minimum of four and get out of there. Now, a little pro tip, if you're looking for an easier way to escape, is that you can actually draw guards uh, to certain noise devices, like um, the hand dryers in the bathrooms. Those actually work to draw guards there, and that'll help clear out some people in the lobby and help you get out easier. Now, day two is going to come down to just following instructions. Answer the phone, put the paintings on the table, throw the paintings up to the helicopter. Helicopter throws money down. You you take the money to the car. That's all there is to it. Done deal. Now, day three, you have three people go into the building. One person stay up on the camera feed. You're looking for five electronic items. People should be marked via the camera feed. Get all five electronic items. Get to the roof. Assemble them. Get downstairs. Use the desktop computer to access the vault. Find the vault. Place eight bags of coke that are thrown down on the roof into the pre-vault room, clear the vault of all its gold if you want to, and then you escape. Now this is of course a very complicated mission. I hope you guys did enjoy the walkthrough and I really hope it helped. If it did, make sure that you're leaving some feedback and let me know what I can do to improve further commentaries. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. My name is Perky. I'll talk to you later.